Hello one, hello all, it is the gothiest ghost of them all, Kespa in the flesh, and it's time for a review of Hers Collective, we're still here. Hers Collective is a band founded by um, Blast Beat Killer, Jenna Pup, and guitarist Asim, and they have definitely evolved since then. They have definitely evolved, they have brought on other people, other bands, other vocalists, just making this massive movement, this massive movement for the LGBTQ plus community. And they have just kicked ass ever since. Um, on their last album, which was titled Friends, Lovers, Favorites, which came out last year, which I didn't really cover because I wasn't really too aware of it, unfortunately. But it definitely had, like, some great um, vocalists on there. Collaborations with Laura Jane Grace of The Screaming Females. Um, Shirley Manson of Garbage Fame, which I'm sure you know. Um, Sadie Switchblade. Uh, and, yeah, like, they have just kept on adding more people and more people on to uh, collab with them. It, it's pretty much like a compilation, but with a cause. And the cause is to bring awareness of, um, of trans people existing, of gay people existing, of so many things. And not only that, but it also leans on um, battling capitalism. It also leans on just the marginalized just living and with Donald Trump the orange man the orange monster who we know pushing these bills towards the ban of gender affirming care for trans kids and also a bunch of other bigoted shit done by Donald Trump Jr. Ron DeSantis there's really no no wonder why this album would come out and definitely much needed definitely much needed and it doesn't really help that you have conservative scumbags like Michael Knowles and Matt Walsh and other Daily Wire idiots just pushing this agenda so now we have this album and right now we are looking at appearances from, again, Shirley Manson of Garbage Fame. We're looking at Justin Pearson of The Locust. We're looking at um, Pierce Jordan of Hardcore Punk Soul Glow, which I had at top of my list last year. Great album. Still gotta buy it. Um... And also, uh, My Chemical Romance member and uh, guitarist, uh, Frank Lero. And uh, vocalist, Jordan Dreer of post-hardcore band, La Dispute. So, definitely a lot of great appearances here. I'll get into more as, as we continue. And just all coming together, making this visceral, powerful outspoken, manically delivered, heavy, kick-ass album. And we even have a rap verse on here, too, that really goes hard with, like, rebellious horrorcore theme bars. But the one that stuck out to me the most, it wasn't exactly horrorcore, but I found humorous, uh, was All the Youth Are Catatonic, We In The Streets, and Out The Closet. Bars. Like, and they're not just delivering you harsh noise, dizzying riffs, rapid drumming, even though that does rule and that does kick ass. It's also the message, the message they're delivering here, the message they're putting out. And the self-titled opens up with like these heavy, distorted guitars, shredding vocals, with the lyrics in the midst of all this hatred and bigotry, like, we will not disappear, we will not fade away, we're always here. Uh, showing that the people are living their truths, living their lives, and not going away, making a stand. Like, 
rebelling against this fascism that has been brought upon them and showing they exist and just going to keep on existing. And with this being means of therapy that they could probably find through this, probably find through this music, um, which, which is super based and surely delivers like these grungy anthemic vocals in pure garbage fashion. The track Sweet Like Candy has like these headbang guitar breaks, uh, squealing riffs, rapid drum rolls, and thick kick drums, thick thunderous kick drums. Like it feels like you're in the pit and then it goes into like these warped guitar leads and warped vocals. Like it feels like someone threw one of these dumbass conservatives into a pit, knocked them in the head, and they just have like this concussed feeling and like this warbly instrumentation productions like what they're visualizing before they get moshed in 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 minecraft of course uh but yeah the album isn't really all about lbgtq plus issues like i said before it also speaks on poverty issues as well um with the track burn your house down which is this like all-out attack on these heartless gutless conservative capitalists like, really instilling the message that these despicable pieces of trash are living comfortably while you have this power, you have this money to change things, but you would rather point blame and instead just, like, relax while people are suffering and dying, while you could be making these changes of just helping them and saving lives, making life-saving situations but you would rather relax while they suffer. What a world. The track Waste Not Want pretty much um, almost kind of goes into the same issue too, where it features Pierce Jordan of Soul Glow, Katarina of Eskir La Grind with these freakish screamed vocals and this rumbling bass, like winding, dizzying guitar leads which is about not living to societal standards um, that America has, like, put upon them to where, like, also, on the other hand, saying America has pretty much set them up for failure. So how do you expect someone to prosper if you're not giving them the proper tools and proper conditions to do so? So pretty much in my eyes, it's like a jab at systemic racism in a way um no yeah in a way and then blaming them for not following along with it when you really didn't set up the system for them to prosper in the first place and we also get on the back end this baby crying at a hospital which i would assume symbolizes the life of another who's put into this world who probably is destined to fail but man um also i do love the contrast of jordan's vocals on the back end with katarina's vocals as well another um vocal chemistry i think goes over well like in terms of contrast is uh xoxo with these blood curdling vocals with yasuko's like cute yet angsty vocals banging into the mix and amongst like these savage rampant instrumentation and this syncopation of like distorted like guitars alongside these drums it's just insane and the chants at the end like these whirling riffs and growling guitars like really ended out perfectly um and honestly makes me want another melt banana album I need another Melt Banana album. We also get that um, horrorcore rap banger, Judgment Night. Um, The song Trust the Process features features guitarist Frank Lero of MCR and has these immense rushes of kicks, drums, kick drums with these obtuse blaring guitars with these arpeggios that are kind of mathy, but not too mathy that they throw off the visceralness and rawness of the track. Um, 
and Rosie Richardson of hardcore punk band Witch Night. I mean, Night Witch. I'm making a lot of mistakes. It's late. I'm doing this raw. Bear with me. And she's like describing our flawed healthcare system, which is you're just paying too much, and the youth is getting like these adverse effects from getting too much of the medicine that's overpriced. And keep in mind, too, this isn't a anti-modern medicine song. This is pretty much just like a jab at how the way our healthcare system is run, there needs to be an improvement, a massive improvement, and done quickly. So, unfortunately, though, midway, I don't think we get, like, the best tracks, in my opinion. Um, like, the shrieking vocals from the body just come off kind of silly. Like, I've never really taken them too seriously. Um, and they do kind of sound a little phoned in. Sorry, body. Um, I feel it's one of those moments, too, where the vocals do not mesh well at all. And another, um, another instance of that, I would say, is the song So Anyway which is how I felt after listening to the track. Um, it doesn't go over quite well. Like, the savage savage instrumentation and clean vocals uh, just don't sound well. They really sound like what would happen if Neil Sariga screwed up on a mashup and it just went terribly wrong. Luckily, though, the clean vocals do go over well on the next track. Um, and from here, like, there's this fire on, like, the last leg of the album in general. <laughs> Uh, a different kind of deathbed with these crunchy thrash riffs. Like, it came from the 80s. It's like 80s thrash on steroids. Um, and the passionately harrowing melodic vocals from, I believe, Anthony Green on here with these distraught, depressive vocals. Um, and the lyrics being at, like, a low state and feeling defeated, feeling like you've lost all meaning and just want to stay in bed until... You pretty much fade away into depression, which is pretty grim. And honestly, with the way things are going right now, I can't say I blame them. The song Nayla, Nyla features a dream collab of modern po for modern post-hardcore fans, such as myself, with Jordan from La Dispute, Jeremy from Touche Amour, and admittedly, not the most melodic in instrumentation, given the fact that vocally they're featured and not exactly the meeting of the bands. It makes sense. Um, but yeah, like the brutal instrumentation, the dark poetic lyrics just are great on here. With lyrics like life is privileged, death is not. And following the track, we get like this humorous passage of this woman letting out prisoners and imprisoning police. Sounds like a fair trade. Well, maybe some could stay in there. Um, Dark Z Derek Zanetti of Homeless Gospel Choir delivers like these unhinged sung, vibrating vibrato, very eccentric vocals. Kind of reminds me of Jello Biafra a little bit with these anti-capitalistic lyrics, which definitely is a great fit due to the fact that uh, Jello Biafra is an anarchist and a great front man from Dead Kennedys. Listen to them. Um, and I would say, like, Chris 2 of Anti-Flag screaming his brains out really brings more to the track, too. Um, we also get the song Bringing the Light of Replenishment featuring Sunrot and Punk Celeste, which has, like, these primal drum and bass passages, not to be confused with the genre, which really boils down to the lyrics. The fire really boils down to the lyrics, like... The frustration of the LGBTQ plus community being tired of aggressively being demonized. Just, they're, they're just exhausted of the, of the oppression they've faced. Just for living. Just for living their life, being who they are. And just wanting to live amongst a normal society. Live in normalcy. Like, just do what everyone else is doing without being put in a corner of just fascist agenda and just ends off 
with these triumphant guitar passages that just really symbolize the feeling of just wanting that victory, of just seeing the light at the end of this bigoted, fascistic tunnel that these people are facing. So, yeah. Overall, kick-ass album, great album, powerful album. Um, sure, there were some tracks that left a lot to be desired in terms of contrast, in terms of vocals, but hey. Um, and yeah, I definitely dug this. I think this was a great compilation. Um, I'm feeling a four out of five on this album. If you've given this album a listen, what did you think of this album? Let me know. Let me know. Hopefully you thought good things. And if you have negative, negative feelings on this, I hope it's because of the sonic quality or vocal quality, because it might not be your thing, because if the message isn't your thing, then yeah, you, you could unsubscribe if, if you want to. I, I'd like you to. So, yeah, as an ally, I definitely dug this, love this, and again, hopefully you did too. Big shout out to Hers Collective. And yeah, Gothic Ghost, Hers Collective, till we meet again.